quiet seaside town, an evil lain to rest centuries ago, has risen. An abandoned fortress deep in the swamp holds a secret that could save the village or destroy it. Now, a band of adventurers sets out to dig up the wounds of the past and bring the light of day to the roots of ruin. This is Tabletop Gold. Friends, and welcome to Tabletop Gold, The Roots of Ruin, episode 71. My name is Lars Castine. I'll be your host for this, uh, for the festivities that you're about to uh, go on, the adventure that you are going to be taken on. You can count on me to be your host. I'm also your game master. I'm the person who runs the game that we're playing. I'm joined today by four players of this game and also podcast co-hosts. That's right. I demoted everybody to co I don't demoted, promoted. I'm not sure. We're going to meet all of those people right now. David, the Tin Man Chernikov is here. Good that time. Yeah, I feel like we, uh, I guess it's a great leveling, but I think mostly you're just trying to demote yourself. That's the feeling I might I'm be. getting. That, that's true. I feel like I've gotten too big for my britches. I've got what the millennials call imposter syndrome. Um, I actually have the opposite of that. Can I just say that for a moment? I don't feel like I don't deserve the things that I have. I feel like I deserve way more than I have. Is I, that, is, does that, am I a psychopath for, for feeling that I way? I agree with you. I'm not supposed I'm, to no, say I agree microphone? wholeheartedly. Uh, you definitely. All and, the things. And in this context, um, um, just staggeringly so. So I think if, if we're all co-hosts, then, then we need to elevate, we need to give you a bump up. So maybe Magistrate. you're, yep. Okay. <laughs> magistrate Castine. I like it. Officiating. Pod, pod master? But magistrate no, is more I don't is want that. more real. I like magistrate. It feels more official. Zoe Chernikoff is here. Hello. Our Matt Humphreys is here. Good hat time to all y'all. Good, oh, good hat time. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm getting a little fun with it. Yeah, I like that. You're not even wearing a hat, but I guess it would be a good hat time if you were. Robin Lang is here. I think I'm going to be Robin Windsor this week. Oh, um, I know, yeah. I know it's been a promotions. while since the queen passed, but if we're talking about promotions and things that we are really entitled to, I think I've always felt like I belonged with royalty. Okay. So, yeah. Well. So, uh, <laughs> we last week, it's, it's, listen, it's October uh, 24th today. If you're listening to this on the day that we're dropping this, the uh, the late October pumpkin spice celebration here at Tabletop Gold is ongoing. We told you last week that we were going to do this which pumpkin spiced food are you quiz <laughs> live on the air. This is a quiz that a an online publication called BuzzFeed uh, published on October 17th, 2018. And I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to take this quiz now. Is that what we're doing? Correct. Is yes. this the content that we're putting out? Okay, here we yeah. go. Here's the first question. Who wants to read these questions? I do. Yeah, okay, I, read, I did the last one, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> question one. Drum roll, please. Pick a drink. Apple cider, chai latte, mm -hmm. mold mm -hmm. wine, hot toddy, hot chocolate, or herbal tea? Which this is, is it's got mint leaves in the picture, but if you want a chamomile, you can use your imagination. So we select, we we just selecting quietly, or are we all saying what we're I doing? Think we we talk, I think yeah, we should talk. I think we should. I we should do yeah, it. Yeah, we should talk it out. This is the real content. Everyone comes to uh, tabletop yes. role playing uh, <laughs> podcast, podcast for. for. <laughs> Let's figure out what the show's answers would be. Also, <laughs> oh, no, no, oh my god! Please. Wait, it's would so our characters' answers be different? No, than our, stop. Okay, okay. No, stop no. it. Hang on, I'm getting nine tabs. Streamlining. Too many cooks, too many cooks. David, which of these things do you choose? Uh, I would, of all of these, I would choose apple cider. Apple cider. It's it's hot apple cider, if that makes a difference to anyone. But yeah, that, I'll go with apple cider. Okay, Zoe, what have you got? I want hot toddy. Hmm. 
I don't actually know that I like it that much, but it's the thing on here uh, I would be least likely to make for myself. So the idea that someone just handed me one was exciting. Oh, hey, here's a hot toddy. I'm ready for a hot toddy. Like at this point, I feel like I know the the upper limitation of a number of these drinks, but I'm ready for a hot toddy to redefine the way that I think about hot toddies. <laughs> like I, I assume that there's a hot toddy out there that is going to blow my mind. And hopefully yeah. that's the hot toddy that I'm given by this quiz. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever actually had a really good hot toddy. So this but is That's what I'm saying. That's what right, I'm, that's right. what I'm saying. Right, you're ready to... Yeah. Okay, I get so it. So if someone offered... So if you had to pick one of these, you're you're picking one that you don't like on the basis that someone might give you one that's so good you would like it. I'm always that's looking so for new experiences. Awesome. Love it. My mom used to give me hot toddies when I was homesick in middle school. <laughs> I get it. I I imagine me too. Um, Um, Armet, what did you pick? Uh, I picked apple cider, um, which I would pick. I think I was tempted by the mulled wine because I do enjoy a good mulled wine, I have to say. Um, But I think either hot or cold, apple cider is what I would go for. It's a great choice. Robin, what did you choose? I just went for the, like, what is the thing that I actually most would drink most often and i went i think that's a great way of approaching this question i went for herbal tea (laughs) herbal tea i love herbal tea i'm gonna go apple cider too um i love i love apple cider i like all these these are all great drinks we all like all of these right everybody's having a great time so far question two pick a pie that is not pumpkin cherry pecan lemon meringue peach blueberry or strawberry rhubarb david yes what is your pie choice it's a close race between peach and strawberry rhubarb. Which I believe are were the two finalists at this uh, this year's Kentucky Derby also. So I think that that's, that's great. <laughs> yep. And it's and it's strawberry rhubarb by a nose. Ooh. Love it. I want lemon meringue. That's an outsider. I feel like that's an outside choice. I am not a big pie crust person. Controversial mm. take. And all the other pies pictured here have top layers, which means more pie crust. So I like the inside of a peach, a strawberry, rhubarb. I actually don't care for cherry or blueberry pie. I like both of those things separately, but there we have it. All right. All right. Lemon meringue for Let Zoe. Let me talk some more about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love learning about you. Aw. <laughs> Armat. Um, this was a tough one for me. It, I actually, I love a good lemon meringue too. And uh, pecan. But I also went strawberry rhubarb because hey. that was the yeah. David and I are synced here. up uh, tonight. I'm liking it. Hey, pie um, buddy. Yeah, good <laughs> good pie time to you, brother. <laughs> 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 Robin, what did you pick? Cherry, the king of pies. Oh, I went to George Washington uh, University, and it is all about cherries down there. Cherries, the king of pies. Really, the, it's seeped into the school institution as well. It is. George Washington cut down a cherry tree. There's oh. cherries freaking everywhere oh. there. Is that the situation? <laughs> Was it he could not tell a pie uh, oh, no. from oh. any other dish? Uh, no, nope. we have cherry cherry pie in the spring. American yep. history there. <laughs> I'm picking pecan pie because it is the best. Yeah. Let's pick the next soup. Or, soup? Sorry, I, I just... I just <laughs> kind of, I took Zoe's job. Time to pick a Soup. Soup. All images here provided by Getty, and they are of tomato, (laughs) French onion, split pea, I think with ham, there's ham on top. Uh, Looks like ham. Chicken noodle, butternut squash with a lovely garnish, and Mm. clam chowder. New England clam chowder, to be specific. Yes. Oh, good clarification. Yes. How many more questions is this? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, good. We're we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. David, what's your pick? Um, Well, I was going to answer quickly, but since you just did a time check... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, I went. Okay. I went with. Uh, I went with chicken noodle, the classic. I'm not generally as much of a soupman. My three favorite <laughs> soups are on here, and chicken noodle is my king of soups. Very good. Can't disagree with that. Zoe, what is your pick? I went with butternut squash. The garnish looks so pleasing, and I love tomato soup. But the tomato soup here has enormous peppercorns in it. Like, yeah. I don't know what they put, like, halves of peppercorns just over the whole top. So it's a deal breaker for me. Armat, what's your pick? Uh, I also went butternut squash. Although I uh, the first time I took this, I did go chicken noodle. But All right. 
I have to agree. The garni on the butternut squash looks particularly <laughs> lovely. Uh, yeah. There's like a very elegant, uh, what looks like a creme uh, almost. But like, uh, it like almost like coffee art decoratively put around. <laughs> totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's very lovely. So yeah, butternut squash, you've you've uh, won the day by, by just the nose. Lars, Photo would you finish. say our increasing um like <laughs> reliance uh, on visuals exactly is that making <laughs> yeah. for a really good radio it's good yeah. i like it i feel like a lot of people at home are enjoying it people really are like oh i can just imagine this photograph that these people are looking whatever at. they're gonna yeah. pull it up and look along with yeah us. you're gonna dig the quiz you're no better than we are listener robin what are you uh, picking for your soup i continue to go against the group apparently uh, and clam chowder I'm from New England. Right. Clam chowder. Right. It looks like yeah. good clam chowder. It All right, guys. Yeah, next two, we're doing sweet Wait, Lars. Oh, wait, Lars. Lars, answer. Chicken noodle. Let's Her. keep going. All right. Chicken noodle. <laughs> what word do you most associate with fall? Leaves, cozy, books, sweater, pumpkin, or orange? <laughs> this quiz is <laughs> In one word. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> the word I most associate with fall is leaves, but the word I'm choosing here is cozy. Because that's what I like most about fall. So I'm just doing my own thing here. Okay, going rogue. I like it. Zoe, what's your pick here? Cozy for me as well. I was thrown by books. But <laughs> fall anyways. Books? Fall books. <laughs> like back to school? I guess. Like textbooks? Yeah. Mm. Could be. Stationery should be on here. Armat, what have you got for the word that you most associate with fall? Or answer the question whatever way you want to, since David's just <laughs> broken this chestnut wide open. Yeah, I didn't go rogue. I went barbarian. <laughs> I love it. Cozy. I went with cozy. I, too, love the coziness of fall. Yeah. It's a cozy sweep so far. Robin, are we going to keep this? Is this going to be a, co a cozy dynasty that we're, that we're setting up? I was going to say cozy, but then I thought, but cozy makes me think of sitting by the fireplace in winter. So I went with mm. leaves. Okay. All right. Yeah. Looks like we got a full house because I'm going leaves as well. Three cozies, two leaves on account of how many leaves there are. What's the next question, Zoe? All right. This will be someone can hold us accountable to what we said last year about Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite Thanksgiving side dish, stuffing, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, corn, green bean casserole or cornbread. All right, David. Well, I was going to say uh, orange or leaves, but in the interest of matching up with last year, I will go with mashed potatoes. Ooh. Same for me. Zoe. I'm a mashed potatoes girl. All right. Uh, stuffing all the way. I don't need your damn turkey. Give me all the stuffing. Agreed. Of the options I have been presented with. Oh, oh no. Mashed That's potatoes. Off the cast. Mashed potatoes. And uh, it's me, Mr. Stuffing. I love a stuffing because <laughs> of how yeah. it tastes another good. Full another house. full house. Hey, full plate. Another full house. Armat, so far, the common al No, I don't I don't understand what analysis I, I was attempting to do. I am the Rosetta there. Never mind. Stone of the group. It's true. Yeah, I totally understood where you're going with that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> the great connector. <laughs> oh, God. And Zoe, what's our final... <laughs> no, no, there's two no. more lives. Don't worry. What is our, our, our penultimate. infuriatingly penultimate <laughs> so, question? This... this <laughs> This question is my favorite. It just says, pick an apple dish. There's there's no qualifier for on what basis. Just pick one. <laughs> apple pie, candy apple, apple fritter, tart tart tatin, apple cinnamon overnight oats, the notorious favorite, and apple chips. I've heard of half of these. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. David? I'm going to answer this one by way of a long personal anecdote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I was just going to throw something. You just have to, babe, you just have to pick an apple. I, none of these super duper appealing to me. I'm going to go with apple fritter. It feels mm. like a little lowest common denominator, but that's my choice. Apple fritters are good. All right, Zoe. I also genuinely love apple fritters. We just found a new donut place that has delicious mm. fresh apple fritters, and I'm, I'm in on them. So. All right. I also love a good apple fritter. There's a place down the street that if you get there in the morning, does the best apple fritters, but I'm going apple pie because my mom makes oh. the world's best apple pie. Ooh. Well, that seems unfair that you get to pick the world's best yeah. one, but yeah. Robin, what's your what's your choice? I was thinking apple fritter at first as well, but man, apple pie with a scoop of ice cream, maybe some cheddar cheese on the side as well. Apple pie is real good in the fall. 
Hell yeah. Apple pie for me too. I don't even oh. know what an apple fritter is. Let's oh, keep yeah. going. It's like a donut with pieces of apple in it. So you feel like Oh, that dressed. sounds good. Can I change my answer? <laughs> BuzzFeed's not working. The, the website's crashed. We have to start over again. Just kidding. Uh, Zoe, what's the final, right. the merciful final question? <laughs> nice and straightforward on a scale from one to six. How hard scale. will this be to edit? <laughs> <laughs> How much do you personally love pumpkin spice? One, two, three, four, five. Or six. I'm a one. I don't really like it very much, which I think we covered <laughs> last week. Yeah. Yeah. This is sort of a recap uh, at this point. <laughs> Zoe, how about you? Four. Okay. Arma. Uh, three. I. It's okay. It's pretty good. I like it. Robin. I just said two. I'm going to say two as well. Um, I've heard of it. I've probably had it a couple times. Let's go around the table and reveal which pumpkin spice product we all win or are. David, the Tin Man Chernikov, is the fall or whatever is the pumpkin spice. This one, I am pumpkin spice Oreos. Gross. It says, Zoe, what's yours? <laughs> Wait a minute. You don't want the blurb? The blurbs are so oh. good. Do we want blurbs? Pumpkin no. spice Oreos. We should definitely do the blurbs. Okay, let's They're do the blurbs. It says, you're a little sweet, a little spicy, and a whole lot of awesomeness. You're smooth and are a perfect balance of flavors. You are patient in most situations, but can have a bit of a temper if pushed too far. Is this. this David or Mag? You have a healthy ego and sense of self-confidence. You have very few enemies. Now I love it's David. So much. Great. comes naturally to you. I feel like yours is like 400 words longer than mine. <laughs> You're right. We yeah. shouldn't do the blurbs. Uh, I am pumpkin spice Oreos, okay. apparently, which is a product I have never had and have no interest in. <laughs> I imagine you never will have it. I don't nope. think that you're ever going to eat it. Nope. Zoe, which are you? I am pumpkin spice deodorant. That exists? Gross. <laughs> Gross. Oh. Uh, apparently. What's the blurb? I'm so... Huh. I didn't see that coming. Your love of pumpkin spice is hardcore and you love to push things to the extreme. Oh, I hate You're this. not afraid to be a little different <laughs> because you smell super delicious. You're hella <laughs> spicy and you wouldn't change it for the world. Wow. Hella That's spicy. I like, that. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming around on this, this whole concept. Extremely <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Armat, which pumpkin spice product are you? I'm a pumpkin spice latte. Uh-huh. I'm a little controversial, Classic. and I might not be everyone's favorite, but I've still got a strong cult following. I've got a bold personality and always speak my mind. And sure, I'm basic, but that doesn't mean I'm not delicious. I feel my brain shrinking <laughs> as we're doing this. <laughs> I had so much fun doing that reading, by the way, in case you guys uh, couldn't tell by how beautiful. much of a meal I was making out of it. Um, it was beautiful. I'm so excited to share mine. <laughs> okay, I share did this it. last week, and the fact that I got it two quizzes in a row makes me feel like it's very true. I am <laughs> pumpkin spice vodka. Oh, oh no! I can't okay. believe it exists. Ooh. I'll do that. I try that. Make I've a white got, Russian with that. I've got a Why taste not? for the finer things in life, and I'm not afraid of being a little weird. You're, I'm packed full of seasonal flavor, but I still allow people to get their drank on. Drank is how they wrote it in the article. It's it's that's but forget yep. about it, Jake. It's buzzing. The, <laughs> the definition and the definition of delicious and my presence is beyond comforting. Wow. Well, I'm I'm ecstatic to report that I got pumpkin spice latte and therefore do not need to read this because I had already covered it. <laughs> Well, um, listener, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you discovered something about yourself. I hope you learned something about us. I hope you learned something about pumpkin spice. Something about BuzzFeed, maybe. Something about BuzzFeed. (laughs) Pick an apple treat, listener. Pick an apple treat. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, before we move on to the game, let's talk about something that's uh, near and dear to my heart. And that is that I want to take a moment to thank everybody who has left a review of Tabletop Gold at their podcast app of choice. Like, for instance, our mutual friend Kevin, who left in a uh, review for us. <laughs> mutual on friend Podcast Kevin! Addict. Woo! We love you, Kevin. Kevin says, Belcora, more like Belmora. Oh! Don't, uh, don't encourage him. Yeah. <laughs> but he is right. It is a lot more like that. Anyway, uh, this is all to say that people who know us are by all means invited to leave reviews. There's, if there's they're no, nice. That's no excuse. If they're nice, that's true. 
Thank you, well, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank you, you very Kevin. much, Kevin. Fun fact, uh, Kevin married David and I. Aw. He, yes, he, he officiated was, so, the, the ass. You know, we didn't pay him for that, and now he's paying us, so we owe him. But he's not really paying us well, so much. In, in kindness. Com- compliments? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well. Yeah. Okay, let's <laughs> get into it. Let's play our game. Woo, woo, woo! Throughout your explorations of this expansive underground fortress, you've repeatedly seen the influence of Volik Azrene, a mysterious drow man who, hundreds of years ago, was one of Belcora Harovex's closest confidants. You've picked through his glassworking shop. You've examined his necromantic research lab, and you recovered a portrait of Azrene as a beautiful young man from the body of a librarian whose unrequited love for him compelled her to remain as a ghost for centuries. But now you're staring straight at the most overt sign of Volik Azrene yet. In an underground lounge, you stand in front of something that looks a lot like the handsome man in that portrait, except this creature is actually a convulsing pile of screeching leeches. No bueno. Gross. We we left off with Mag holding up this portrait and this this monstrosity made of this swarm of leeches screaming, like breaking the illusion of being a single intelligence, like each leech individually screaming at once. Before we go any further, I want to ask you what you know about Volok Azrene. Like, what is it that you have learned as you've moved through the dungeon? Well, we initially learned that he had enchanted the soulbound doll that we encountered er- early in the journey. And that. Borbo. Yeah. Bo- Aww, and that Borbo. took Haplo's life. Wait, Borbo was different than the bird, right? Borbo was the one we found on the second floor. It was Borbo's soul, right? We Oh, right. We put the soul stone from Mr. Beak into Borbo, and it was Borbo, I guess. It was, is right. Right. You're right. So we know that he was, like, incredibly cruel to Borbo. We know that he left a note for someone who it was implied to be his lover when we found the note like looking for these three particular books about um, swarms and reanimating things and stuff. But, and then it turned out that, that the person he was leaving the note for was Chandriu and Vizar, who we later encountered in the like uh, book area. Who, who had, yeah, who had the scriptorium who had feelings for him, but he maybe didn't return those feelings. He was, kind of using her. In this yeah, he didn't care much about her. She was yeah. definitely using her. Yeah. Um, because he's in cruel. love with Belcora. And then we have the idea that he hated pictures of himself. Right, because he slashed through his picture up on the first floor, right? right. There was like right. all those portraits along the wall in the back building. And, and to Robin's point, last time we played, the, the like basically one of the last things he said to you is that he he's glad that you're here because taking care of intruders should prove to his dearly beloved that he's worth speaking to directly. That's a weird thing to say. So does that mean that, like, he can still, like, the spirit, I guess that means the spirit of Belcora is still around and communicating, but not with him. How do you think Norman, Vadim, Mag, and Trill are responding to seeing this creature in front of you? I think Trill's looking at this and having gone through all those books, because she was really paying attention to the books that they were collecting and trying to understand these texts. Um, She's looking at this and seeing him as a, this true kind of bastardization of the necromantic arts that she started studying more and more recently. And she's disgusted and kind of a little enraged at seeing him. 
at this moment. Yeah, I would agree. I think Vadim is kind of furious with this guy after having encountered uh, Chandria and Vizar. Like, his cruelty to her would be really rankling to him. And so I think he just is ready to get vigilance a-swinging um, and get some leech blood on it. <laughs> he He treated her so badly. He led her on so aggressively that it created undead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty noxious like, behavior. That certainly pushes Vadim's buttons, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that do the trick. That's quite an intense friend zoning. <laughs> <laughs> he ghosted her. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, Can we was... take away a hero point from our <laughs> GM for that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> magistrate Castine, you are docked one hero point. Our game, our game magistrate. <laughs> does he? Lo- yeah. Does the game magistrate lose a uh, or some ballast points? Maybe. Right. Your ballast points oh, take yeah. on water. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they they do. I I now have five million soggy ballast points. You've got weevils in your hard tack. Yar. Yar. I think Norman first and foremost relates to this person as like the person who created something that destroyed Haplo. Uh, you know, like this is th- without this guy, th- they would probably still have Haplo around. And so, uh, you know, he's deeply suspicious and not inclined to think the best of this person, which is weird. I know with the body <laughs> covered in, not covered in the body that is leeches. Usually in gender's chest. I think Mag would feel revolted by what she's by the spectacle she's seeing and angry and threatened by you know Volok who who who, in the course of the last couple of weeks she has come to believe to be like a big part of the like the force behind this huge threat this weapon that's menacing her home I, lo- I love that the four of you have, like, completely different reasons for hating him. That Trill, it's like his corruption of necromancy. Vadim for how he mistreats people, like, in his life. Norman, because he killed uh, their friend. And Mag, because of, like, the threat that he's currently posing to the town. Like, this guy has really got a lot going on with him. He kind of ticks all the boxes. <laughs> yeah. Plus, sure the, does. plus the bonus, uh, he's made of a swarm of leeches. Bob. Yeah, he's <laughs> disgusting. He's he's foul. Yeah. yeah, that's second on everyone's list. So. Great <laughs> villain design. Robin Trill is investigating using occultism. I think in the oh. time that you were looking at this guy, there is certainly time to get a recall knowledge check off. If you'd like to do that, yeah, let's do that. That sounds fantastic. Give me a blind occultism check, please. Uh, t- so Trill takes a look at this at this creature in front of you, and all she's really able to note is that this looks like a swarm of of leeches. She doesn't get much sense beyond that. So what are the swarm rules again? Can you remind us, Lars? Yeah, swarm rules. The the deal with swarms is that they, you know, they're made up of individual creatures that are all tiny. A swarm can occupy the same space as other creatures and usually has to do so in order to attack. Uh, A swarm typically has weaknesses to effects that deal damage over an area. So area spells and splash things tend to hurt swarms particularly well. And they're immune to grappled prone and restrained conditions. So you can't like try to trip them because you'll just, your arms will just pass straight through the swarm. Is basically what you know. I think you also know that they tend to be resistant to some kind of physical damage of some sort. Okay. The next thing I want to say is that David held up this book just at their mag held up this book just at the end of our last session. I'm going to retroactively give David a hero point for that. Ooh. Because Azrenae certainly notices that book and is is distracted by it, is trying, is staring at it aggressively. We'll see what happens with that. Okay, I think we've covered everything. Let's get into it as this encounter starts. Let's all. Yeah. 
roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. Let's all roll for initiative. Hey, Lars. Yeah. Since Trill's been investigating a, with, in, with a cult, could I roll a cult rather than perception? Absolutely. I think that you taking a look at this cre- at this creature and figuring out what is going on with it is certainly something that makes sense for you to respond earlier in combat for. Cool. And, and uh, Norman trying to chat the guy up, would it be cool if he rolled diplomacy? Uh, sure, you can go ahead and roll diplomacy uh, or deception, uh, whichever way you, you want to do it. I will say that rolling deception will make him flat-footed for you because of your surprise attack, but you can you can do this however you want to. Plus, I'm slightly better at it, so I'll go with diplomacy. No, I'm kidding. Uh, deception it is. What is the difference for Norman, to be honest? I'm still working on that. It is occasionally <laughs> hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing to say. Mag is scouting when, when you came into the room, so if anybody ties with Volok, they are going to get the advantage on that roll. David, how did Mag do on initiative? It's only an eight on the die for a 17. So I think probably, you know, the process of connecting the dots on who this is and then actually having the portrait in hand um, is probably slowing her approach to combat. Zoe, how did Norman do? 28 for Norman. Pretty good. Very fast. Maybe not the fastest in this encounter, though. How did Ar- Armet, how did Vadim do? Uh, Vadim also did not do so great. He also rolled a dot eight on the die. So, uh, I, yeah, I think, you know, seeing the leeches probably just horrified him as he realized what it was and kind of put him on his back foot. Robin, how did Trill do? Um, Trill could have done better. Trill got a 24. Kind know. of middle of the pack on yeah. this one. I've got I've got bad news. Like I said, David, Mag was scouting. That means that you guys would break ties. Norman got a 28 on initiative. Volik got a 29. Boo. So he is one faster. Still going to go first. And he will not be flat-footed as a result, right? And he will not be flat-footed as a result. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of Volik Azrenay's turn, he is screaming as he sees this picture that Mag is holding up. Where did you get that? Who gave that to you? I thought I had destroyed all paintings of of, of the old me. And he's looking at this painting and he makes a will save to try to push the memories that this thing is bringing up aside. He rolls a 19 on the will save. He fails and he becomes slowed one. Whoa. Whoa. That's huge. That's crazy. (laughs) Oh no. So he's going to get two actions this turn. I'm ruling it so that he does that before he gets his actions on the turn. I think that only makes sense. Oh no. I mean, oh yes for us, but oh no, Lars. (laughs) So this swarm of leeches starts gesticulating and uttering this crazy chant, like all of the different leech mouths at, at similar times, go, just all of these leeches at once uttering this insanely convoluted arcane chant as suddenly Mag starts feeling uncomfortable. I'll say. If Mag looks down at, at her arms, the one holding the bastard sword and the other holding this portrait of Azrene, she starts seeing worms materializing all over her arms, starting to chew upon her. And I need a fortitude save from Mag. Hey, Lars, was this yes. from a auditory trait that was triggered this? No. Okay. No. <laughs> they're, they're just casting a spell. Okay. I couldn't tell if there was sound that was triggering this. Just checking. Mag's fort save is a 27 against this creeping feeling of of leeches beginning to nibble on her. Okay. That is just barely a success, meaning that you're able to withstand the bites of these maggots. Worms. That Each means that... Each time we've talked about them, there's something else. Just a whole writhing. <laughs> these, yeah, you're, 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 it's multiple things. I, I, I say these are, I think a maggot and, and worms. Are, who knows? I picture all the different bugs that are inside Oogie Boogie when he yes. becomes unraveled in um, Nightmare Before Christmas. So you got a success. That means that you take full initial damage. Just imagine what a failure would be like. That is 12 points of piercing damage as these worms start 
chewing on you. Ooh. And then you feel the spell end as these maggots all drop off of your body. As Volok, 10 feet away from Mag, starts wheezing and holding his hand up to his chest and unable to move more because he is so overwhelmed by the emotional situation prompted by this portrait. It's now Norman's turn. Norman is jarred by this uh, and thinks this whole thing is revolting and like just wants this guy gone thinking about um, the bird with the soul stone in it. Like the longer this goes on, the more terrified he is something bad's going to happen. So he had chompers out over his shoulder exploring this room and fires off two quick arrows at uh, whatever remains of Volok for a 24 and a 14. The 24 just barely misses. It <sighs> just passes between a, a gap in the leeches and the, the 14 misses wildly, uh, hitting into one of the paintings on the side of the room. Oh, what is this thing? Norman says, and he pulls out a wand. Okay. As Norman draws the wand, it is now Trill's turn. Trill knits her brows together and has her lute in her hand and plays some rousing chords to try and get everyone boosted up as she glares at Azrene and, or, you know, what creates Azrene now in his horrific current state. Disgusting. So we'll cast some lingering composition to inspire courage. Yes, yes, yes. And see how that comes out. And that was one short of a 20 on the die. Uh, So that was a 33. Critical success. Your your inspire courage is going to last for four rounds. Oh, yes. Very, very good for you. So go ahead and everyone should have that now. Not for me. Well, less good for me. Fantastic. Thank you, Trill. Thank you, Trill. Trill looks next to her and sees um, her dear friend Mag with a bit of blood coming off her brow. And Trill could heal Mag or Trill could attack. That's right. Mag has not healed since the last encounter. What's Trill going to do? Vadim still has a focus point and could use Lay on Hands. Uh, so if you'll do Lay on Hands, then I can always, if you use a focus point, see where it gets you, and then I can always um, come in later with uh, with Soothe. Yeah, yeah, and there's a totally. bite out of Mag, but I also have 62 hit points. Perfect, so. okay. Yeah. So now that Trill has cast that, um, so Trill kind of looks over to Vadim and says, Vadim, you got Mag? Okay. And I then Trill gets into some acid rock and plays... <laughs> Acid splash. <laughs> nice. Heading, th- sending that over to that swarm, because what better to spend send over to a swarm than something with splash damage? <sighs> splash zone. Well, that was a twenty-six. Twenty-six is going to hit yes! as this globule of acid pelts the swarm of leeches writhing around within Volok Azrene's clothes. So go ahead and roll damage, and we're also going to add splash damage as well. So that was 11 damage. So the splash damage is still one point of splash damage, which you see like the, the splash as these aerosol droplets of acid rain over this creature. You see that like they are getting eaten through just like <laughs> like bleach through your favorite polo shirt. Haven't we all been there? <laughs> That's right. That's what you get for messing with the necromantic arts poorly. And as this sizzling and hissing sound fills the room just over the low frequency hum also filling the room, it is now Vadim's turn. Uh, so Vadim will look quickly to Trill and be like, I really hate this discussion of necromantic arts and then lays ha- <laughs> uh, uh, hands on Mag right away. Uh, and that will heal her for 18. Ooh, um, thank you. And then, uh, so that's one action. The Dean will run a tight button hook pattern to come and flank behind Volok. And then with his last action, 
strike with vigilance at Bollock. Va, va, va. Uh, which is a 20 to hit, which I'm going to guess is not going to do it. And that misses. The the swarm of leeches jolts out of the way, uh, quickly dodging your slice. And as the leeches move to the side, it is now Mag's turn. Here's what I want to do, Lars. Help me help me make it happen. And Mag wants to, to stride up to Volok with one action, and then hold the portrait up to Volok's face. That's messed up. <laughs> on the theory that, I mean, she's just observed it like weakening him. And on the theory that either that we, that weakness will increase or continue, or at least it will make it harder for him to see. Yeah, let's make something up. Let's, uh, let's say that that's going to be some sort of social check, I think. Like, it seems like you're trying to manipulate him with maybe intimidation, maybe diplomacy, maybe deception. I guess it's intimi- it's intimidation with like a physical, you know, blocking blocking the vision component. Right. So so I I'll take athletics for that also. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push put that make an, an athletics check against his perception DC and if he fails he's going to take a minus 2 to his next will save against the uh, effect of the of the picture. Okay. Cool. Good thinking, Mag. And cool, cool house rule, Lars. All right, here's yeah, that athletics. 100%. <laughs> 20 on the die for 33. So Mag slams this picture nice. forcefully into this swarm of leeches, sending leeches spraying back across the back wall, and then they slide silently back towards their, their, their form. And... Azrene is going to take a minus two to his next save against the picture as he sort of mumbles at you, put that thing away. And Mag puts it away because she's (laughs) polite. No. Um, (laughs) All right. With my third action, I'm going to make the strike that we will all soon wish had the 20. Uh, That is a a 27. And this is a one-handed strike because you're holding the portrait in the other hand. One-handed strike. And 27 hits. All right. And that's nine damage. And you you feel like you're barely doing anything with that. It seems like most of that is getting absorbed by the swarm. Mm. It's the top of round two. In the middle of this octagonal lounge, Volok Azrene is flanked by Mag and Vadim. Vadim looking drained. Mag looking slightly worse for wear after earlier battles in the day. Norman and Trill set up kind of in a triangular shape with Azrene, focusing all of their attention on him. Speaking of focusing attention, at the beginning of his turn, Azrene is going to make a will save, minus two, to try to not be affected by this portrait of himself as a beautiful young man shoved in his would be face. And that only because of the forcefulness with which Mag shoved this portrait in Azrene's face is a 26 on his will save, which makes him fail. All right. He is slowed for one more round and he says to Mag, that's not gonna work again. as he seems to have internalized Mag's aggressive physicality. But he's slowed for now, which is huge. He, he looks around and he reaches out a tendril of leeches, just leeches piled up on each other, like crawling out with insane speed over towards Mag. And this is gonna be a 20 on the die a critical hit against Mag. (sighs) This is not a strike that deals any kind of normal, reasonable damage, so I'm not gonna draw a crit card for this. What this is, is Mag feels her body covered all over with these leeches and starts taking the most absurdly overpowered persistent damage 
thing I have ever seen Vadim? in my life. <laughs> could, could I get She's a not glimpse, taking damage please? now. Oh, glimpse. Persistent. Uh, no. Well, no it doesn't glimpsing. work because it's persistent. Ah! Thank you. Mag, covered with these leeches, is going to take 2d8 plus 16 piercing damage at the end of her turn. What? Times times two. Oh, that's Jesus. too much. No, it should Holy, be less than that. That's like three rounds. Whoa. It's Holy truly crow. messed up. That's bad. Let's. It's real bad. Let's talk a little bit about persistent damage just to make the, the situation here Wait, as Is that going to happen at the end of every round? It's going to happen at the end of your turn. Oh, my okay? God. Here's how persistent damage works. At the end of, each, of, your, at the end of your turn, we're going to roll dice and see how much of that persistent damage you take, right? After that, you make a flat check. On a 15, you clear the persistent damage. So you have a 25% chance. Don't check the math. Look, I'm doing my best here. You have a low chance to recover from that persistent damage. You can, however, take steps to help yourself recover from persistent damage, or an ally can help you. By doing something that requires two actions, you describe what it is. If I think that it would reasonably improve your chances of recovery, then David rolls the flat check. If he beats the 15, Mag clears the damage. If you do something that is particularly effective to clear these leeches that are munching on Mag off David's body, I will lower that DC to a DC 10 flat check. So just to recap, you can spend two actions to give Mag an extra save. If that doesn't happen, or if Mag is still taking this persistent damage at the end of her turn, she will take the damage and then she will make the flat check. Got it? Damn. And is the Damn. damage 2d8 plus 8? 2d8 plus 16 or 2 2d8 plus 16? It's double 2d8 plus 16. It's Every 2D8 time? Plus, yeah, it's 2d8 plus 8, oh. parentheses. So double. a maximum of 64. I am Correct. definitely going to die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Holy crow, dude. We gotta well, let's see if your friends mag. can help you out. Oh, yeah, by the way, Volok Azrenay still has one more action. And what he is going to do is Vadim sees him extend the tendril out towards Mag, and then suddenly his body has like flipped around and reversed itself, and now Volek's arms are reaching towards Vadim, and Volek starts hugging onto Vadim, occupying the same space as him. No. Oh. And I need Vadim to make this reflex save to see how much of these seven pathetic points of piercing damage uh, he's going to take. A very bad damage roll that time. Uh, 28 on the reflex save roll. So you're going to take half damage. That's three points of piercing damage as this swarm is just enveloping Vadim and these leeches are wrapped around him as Mag, Norman, and Trill see an indistinguishable difference between... Volok and Vadim. Vadim is just covered with Volok at this point. There's one more thing I want to say. Volok Azrani, at the beginning of his turn, you saw him heal himself up a little bit. Oh, no. The damage is no. pouring off of his body as he regains some hit points. It is now Norman's turn. All right. So Norman looks over at Mag and sees these leeches uh, gnawing at her flesh and gets the sense that things are dire. And he goes, Mag! Mag, I've got your back, and uses two Aww. turns to, like, a aid her will save so that she can do a little more. Does he have to be next to her for that? Yeah, you'd want to use an action to move up, and then okay. you can use two actions to try to, like, what, what are you doing? You're trying to, like, bat these He, he puts off one hand on her back, and then he's just kind of, like, trying to flick them. All right, so that is enough for Mag to get a flat check against this persistent damage. And we're trying to beat a... 15. There it is. That's a 12. It seems as though these leeches are still staying on Mag. Norman able to get a couple of them off, but not a ton. Maybe, y'all, should I hero point that? I have a second one from the beginning of this session. I should keep one in case I, I die, think, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think, I think using one for this But makes probably sense. I should do this since we just used a whole turn on enabling yeah. that. Okay. Good call. All right. Well, I will 
use a hero point. At some point, Mag will process Norman coming to her aid so speedily and thoroughly. <laughs> and here's that flat check. Again, come on. And that's a one. Oh. All right. Mag digs oh. deep, tries to not be bleeding or not be being getting eaten by leeches, but... Norman inadvertently fails. plucks a few off but leaves the mouths in. A notorious Ooh. no-go with the leeches. I'm going to give a hero point to Norman for the selflessness of that. Agreed. Yeah. It is now Trill's turn. If I cast Acid Splash while well, Azrenae is essentially on Mag, that's on not Vadim. great. Or on, on Vadim? Vadim will take yeah. a one acid damage. Yeah, do okay, it. That's not terrible. Uh, honestly, he would uh, yell... Just, yeah, he'd want yeah. me to do it. Keep firing! Me. Yeah, it he'd doesn't actually want matter. Trill to do it. Um, at the same time, I also kind of want to do, want to try and debuff a little bit with something like Rave and Feeblement. Those are both two actions. But though, actually, yeah. Spells. But I don't know how much enfeeble, enfeebling Splash, as Renee's Splash this busy. Splash no marks. Yeah, so Trill's going to keep playing that acid rock. And send out bow, 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 another bow, bow, bow. acid splash. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's a 22. So that misses, but you still do get the splash damage. So you hear more sizzling and more hissing as more of these leeches are melted away by the acid damage. But Vadim is going to take one splash damage. Okay. Cool. And while Trill continues to play that... Um, acid Rock, she changes the chords a little bit to try and demoralize this, this horrific mass using her versatile performance. And that's a 27. Unfortunately, you get the sense that this swarm of leeches is immune to mental effects that target one creature. Oh, duh. Okay. I should have remembered that. I could have told you. I was having fun not telling you, though. So Yeah, uh, you just let me run with it. I guess I'm the bad guy. You just let me run with it. <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, well. And that's uh, Trill's turn. And as this scary music blasts through the air, it is Vadim's turn. Vadim covered by these leeches. Does it require an escape check or anything to get out? No, it does not. So Vadim is going to step out of the swarm in front of Mag, covering her and in a protective pose and hiss through his teeth. You think your filthy leeches disgust me? I spent days among the dead in last wall. Take this, you fiend. And he will launch into a double slice. And that is uh, 34 and a crit uh, at 35. <laughs> uh, 19 and 20 on the die there. <laughs> you got to draw. <laughs> nice. 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 Oh, that nice. So that 19, I just nice. want you to know, that 19 on the die is not a crit. What? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Even with the Inspire Courage. I don't oh. care for this man. No, he's not... Nice. So this dagger of venom <laughs> gets the critical gets the critical hit. Are you, I imagine you're doing piercing damage with that. Uh, yeah. Or okay. uh, I I was thinking more slashing actually because he's okay. like. Well, we did some slashing and it didn't really work. Do we get to choose? Can we do acid he chooses, damage? He chooses splash on the, <laughs> yeah. the the dagger is going to be splashing. Yeah, Vadim gets to choose because uh, because daggers are versatile. He can do piercing or slashing damage. Uh, Beautiful weapon. Yeah, I think he'd be slashing, to be honest. Like, yeah, with this double enough. slice, just, like, he wouldn't really be thinking. He'd just be launching into two big, like, almost haymaker style But then if you're cuts. slashing at something small, aren't you kind of piercing it? Like a little <laughs> I, I appreciate that Armat's always just tries to stay true to the situation. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. And you know what? This is going to be even more confused by what this crit card is. This is called Flat Blade Thwack. Triple damage, and you can deal bludgeoning damage instead of slashing damage. So, dealer's choice on the damage type for this uh, dagger strike. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think he would actually use the bludgeoning. Like maybe he's using the butt of the blade of the haft uh, to really just crush some leeches, you know? So uh, yeah, let's roll damage on vigilance. Yeah, roll, roll, roll regular damage for both and we'll triple the damage from the dagger. Cool. So that is 17 damage for vigilance and 30 damage for the dagger. Oh, wow. Oh. What a turn. A great turn. Beautiful. Huge turn. How does he like that for healing? He doesn't huh? like it. He he looks at Vadim and he says, "Um, sorry, Lars, you only gave him forty damage. It should be forty-seven damage." Well, the joke's on you. He resisted some of the damage, so I took the exact <laughs> right amount of the damage. Ugh. So he he looks at Vadim and he says, "You're too late, anyway." The experiment is almost complete. And once I've killed you here, nobody will be able to defend that pathetic little town. <laughs> oh, that's so good. It's Mag's turn. Mag feels these leeches all over her body, knowing that something bad is about to happen. What is she going to do? Um, Let me just start by saying, I think I definitely understand this game now. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> because what is happening in my in my spirit and in my body with each roll of these dice is nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's a real roller coaster for sure. Right? And like, and I, I keep zooming out from it and being like, I'm rolling dice and I'm so attached to the outcome. Yeah, it gets so exciting. Yeah, imagine gambling on this. Oh my god. Anyway, <laughs> what oh, number no. episode is this again? <laughs> This is 71. It took me 71 episodes. <laughs> I'm starting to understand the game. Um, Mag, as these tendrils envelop her, and she begins to feel the revolting sensation of these creatures all over her body, she rages. Her eyes, both of her hands, now begin to glow red, and some of the leeches are illuminated you can see, th uh, you know, red light passing Ooh. all the way through their bodies Creepy. as Mag's rage um, increases. With a free action, she'll drop the portrait of um, Volok on the ground. And then with her remaining two actions, she will pull from a pouch at her belt an item which she has been carrying for a while, a bark skin potion. Oh, which she will then drink. After you drink this bitter draft, your skin thickens like bark. You gain the effects of a second level bark skin spell for 10 minutes. Now, listener, you're probably wondering, what are the effects of a second level bark skin spell? Well, let me tell you, the target's skin becomes covered in bark. The target gains resistance to, to bludgeoning and piercing damage and weakness three to fire. After the target takes fire damage, you can just spell as a free action, a bunch of stuff about fire, hopefully, the fire stuff will not be relevant here. <laughs> just we'll, we'll see. super duper hoping. But if we need to revisit the whole like fire thing, we we'll fire, for example. Yes. Uh, as a result of, of this few more hit points from the rage and now some resistance to the piercing damage that is coming persistently, I understand, until I can get out of it with a, with a flat check. Bark bursts out all over Mag's body. Mag now looks like a walking tree, right? as her skin turns to bark. And let's take a look at what happens with this damage situation. That is a pretty nice roll, a one and a four on your 2d8, meaning that Mag only takes 26 points of piercing damage, reduced by two, that's gonna be 24 points of piercing damage to Mag as these leeches struggle to bite into the bark that is now covering Mag's skin. Now, Mag gets to roll a flat check, DC 15. Here's the flat check, and that's a 19, baby. <gasps> Woo! Woo! Ow, ow! 
as this bark, like these leeches chomp on the bark and they just fall off as they give up on trying to bite into Mag. Norman has been quietly swearing at each leech and you're a no good (laughs) son of a... Don't say it. Don't say it. (laughs) And the leeches all slither across the floor between Vadim's feet back to Volek. Well, that was a good use of all my actions and a consumable. Yeah. <laughs> you never you never know. I never what's knew happen. how we would use that barkskin spell. That's yes. very clever. I, I love the idea that all of these things fell off of Tree Mag and, and Tree Mag is now hanging out in the middle right, of the Right, the leeches yeah. didn't have any blood to suck. I think that's totally. awesome. Yeah. yeah. The bark like that was inspired. Totally. Perhaps from some inspired courage. Literally, yes. <laughs> Perhapsically. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at the beginning of round two. There is this swarm of leeches in the southern half of the room braced against this or spilling onto this writing desk. Vadim and Mag and Norman are clustered up around Volik Azrene, and Trill is a short distance away. At the beginning of his turn, Volik is unable to see the portrait and therefore gets all three actions. And so this is the time when I start being the biggest asshole in the world. Woo! We love it! He heals himself up at the beginning of his turn. You see these leeches start to feed off of each other in a grotesque way that somehow heals him. Vadim looks down at his forearms and sees leeches or sees maggots crawling all over them as Azrene casts another spell. I need that fortitude save that I just put into chat from Vadim. 18 on the die for a 27. 27 is a success. Somehow both of you have saved out of this. It means you're going to take the initial damage of these maggots chomping into you. That is 14 points of piercing damage. Once I've killed you, my sweet Belcora will come back to me. She'll see that I'm worthy. And a tendril whips out to Vadim and wraps around his neck. And I have in my hand a prismatic, clear D20 known as the Eye of Hoot. Oh, this thing again. I'm going to physically roll this die for this attack roll against Vadim as this tendril of leeches wraps around his neck. Come on now. That's a 14 on the die, meaning I just rolled a 32. Ooh. Uh, that's going to hit. That's going to critically hit. Oh. That's not true. No, it's armor class. Oh, just under a crit. Oh, holy crow. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, you're, there's no way your AC is worse than mine. Actually, you know what makes the difference there? That's the plus one that Mag added to Vadim's leather armor. Like, that oh. is the only reason that's oh, not a crit. Yeah. Nice. And it, Lars was making fun of me for requesting that Mag spend all day in the smithy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, because of that, Vadim only takes 2d8 plus 8 uh, persistent piercing damage. So, you're right. You win. <laughs> <laughs> it's now Norman's turn. Talk to me about what's going on on the other side of this fellow. If Norman were to try and make him flat-footed with Vadim, would I have to hop up on the desk? You would have to hop up on the desk if you wanted to flank him, Yes. Yeah, but I guess you'd have to do like some sort of athletics check to get up on the desk, or Lars, could you just climb up there? I'd climb up there would be a difficult train. You'd have to use 10 feet of movement to get up onto the desk. We could also try to help Vadim, who just got covered in leeches again. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's not the critted kind, which yeah, is yeah, like true. what was crazy about that. That was so one. much damage. That was so brutal. It's yeah. been a little while since Vadim bled out of his eyeballs while all of us <laughs> continued on unconcerned. You know, he, he actually it. signs up for a good leeching every now and then just to yeah. stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Let's just let's just get him cleansed. Um, all right. Norman is going to he he looks down like realizes Mag is a, a tree. <laughs> looks at the wand in his hand and casts True Strike. Um, and then he is going to fire off a TKP. So Norman does two rolls, the higher of which is a 25. Uh, and he flings a book off the desk at this guy to try and hit him. And that book, the power of Trill's song, fills Norman's heart as it is only from that plus one from Inspire Courage that the book, and and the Wand of True Strike, that the book slams into this pile of leeches wearing these fancy clothes. That was for what you did to the book lady uh, and does 10 points of damage. 
And you get the impression that not all of that is going through, but you are still whittling away at these leeches as some of the leeches get hit by the book and then crawl back into Volok off of the book. It is now Trill's turn. I guess Trill will keep on keeping on. Do what works, man. Trill showed up with exactly the right thing for the situation. <laughs> so Trill's just going to keep on keeping on with Acid Splash. Unlike some of us who don't have the tools for this. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very different story between Norman and Trill in this encounter. Yeah, for it's, sure. it's a cantrip. So Trill's going to cast Acid Splash again. Why not? Wow, that was a terrible roll. I feel like I want to hero point that, actually. Um, just because last roll, Trill didn't do any damage either. And I feel like we got to get this guy. We got to get more than that. So tr I'm going to use a hero point. Yeah. And that was way better. That's a 31. Yeah. And that hits. Trill digs deep and heroically redirects her acid globule towards Volok. It is a direct hit, meaning that you can go ahead and roll damage. And we're also going to do some splash damage. Yeah. So that damage, that's an 11. Okay, so that plus the splash damage plus the weakness to splash damage is actually a bigger number than that. It may surprise you to know as this yes. globule of acid again starts eating into Volok. Tr Vadim is going to take one more point of splash damage from that, though. Sorry, Vadim! How about the leech on him? Does it take a point of splash damage? <laughs> no, but it and really that should. Little, like, that little, like a little bit of splash should like, like a tenth burn of a that point. one little leech yeah. off. <laughs> we, we cut to that leech remembering its leech children and how they were <laughs> just got into college. Um, Trill wants to aid Vadim as her second, as her uh, last action. What, what does Vadim need aiding on? <laughs> uh, attack rolls. Please. Okay. Trill's going to get you. ready. So Trill keeps. <laughs> You know, pl at, you know, playing out in her acid rock, ready to um, support Vadim with a performance check. Maybe it's attack. a Ustalavian acid rock to really get him in the the so attack it's, mode. It's some death metal. I love it. <laughs> She's, she starts moving to death metal. Yeah. Okay, so angry, fast music fills the room as it is now Vadim's turn. So uh, Vadim kicks some of the leeches at his feet, looks at this horrible monster... And says, like Norman said, this is for Chandrio. And he drops his blade into a lowered uh, stance and makes two swift rising cuts to try and slash at Volok as, as Renee and see if he can end this. Let's get that performance check from Trill to aid the first, uh, the, the attack from Vigilance. And that's a 23. Okay, so this attack, this first attack roll is going to get a plus one from Trill's aid and is also getting, of course, the plus one from Inspire Courage. Amazing. Thank you, Trill. <sighs> what I'm here for. Buff, it, buff, it's buff, It's huge. Buff. Um, splash, buff, splash, buff. <laughs> that is a 27 to hit with Vigilance, which is a 29 with the uh, aid from Trill and the um, Inspire Courage. The Inspire Courage is already on there, so it's actually 28. Oh. 28. Thank you. 28 hits. Amazing. Go ahead and roll a 20 now, uh, Armin. Now's the time when you roll a 20. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and a 30 on the strike with the dagger of that. So both, both of those hit as you deftly slice into the collection of leeches, trying to guide your blades to as much of this swarm as you're able to. Yeah, I think Vadim is actually trying to, like, as he uses his body weight to raise the blades through him. He's trying to like cut as much of Azrene apart as he can to like scatter the leeches uh, away from his physical core. So that is going to be 22 damage to Azrene. And you see that not all of that damage is going through as he resists a portion of this physical damage. But it is enough to oh. strike Azrene down. No. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. And as that happens, what a 
You see a swarm of leeches start frantically trying to escape, crawling all along the floor, trying to get to the door to get out of here. This is a special ability that Azrene has called Discorporate. You have two rounds to accomplish the following. Eat all of them. <laughs> you have to apply an area of effect or a splash damage within two rounds to the space where he just collapsed. After any amount of area or splash damage is dealt to that space, the character dealing that damage makes a DC 15 flat check. Each subsequent attack of that type reduces the DC by two. So you have two rounds to work this down from a DC 15 to something that you can hit as these leeches scramble to escape to keep Volok alive for another day. <laughs> At the end of his turn, Vadim is going to take an amazing damage roll, 19 points of piercing damage, and needs to make a recovery check, a DC 15 flat check. Oh, that's a 20 on the die. The team has really been the champion of this oh, fight. Oh, fire. I, I think wow. the, the die roller in Foundry is the champion in this fight. The team's Aristea. So Vadim is able to, with great agility, just fling the remaining leeches off of his body, and they splatter on the rug next to you. It is Mag's turn. You see these leeches, want, like, crawling for safety. What are you going to do? Can you help me understand area damage? This is a new term for me. Yeah, you don't have it. This is a, this is just a lot of pressure on me right now. <laughs> this is this is Trill's Trill's responsibility. Yeah. Or if Nor or if Norman has a wand. Um, I have a wand of quench. Um. Oh, that'll actually work. I was kidding. I think that a wand of quench could work. Like a oh. quench does area area damage. I know that it specifies that it targets fire damage, but I think that throwing a bunch of water on these leeches to try to drown them yeah, makes some amount of sense to I me. I feel That's given brilliant. that they've placed this thing in here and given us no earthly reason to use <laughs> yes. it, I feel entitled for it to be useful here. Yeah. So yeah, if Norman can draw the the, the Wand of Quench, that's a potential area effect that uh, that he could toss off. Awesome. Mag, though, Mag, unless you have like bottles of some alchemical something or other, you're going to have trouble there. Um... I don't have anything alchemical. I mean, I have various potions. Now, Meg have like an herbal but... tea and a thermos on her vest. I do have a water skin, but it sounds like that's not really considered enough water to do anything <laughs> about this. You got anything with some like whiskey in there? Burn it with that. Meg may may be in aiding territory here. Yeah. Buff, 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 buff. If there's any any water sources outside the room that I could like run to and get back in time, but probably not worth doing. Probably just worth aiding. Um, we only have okay. two rounds. Man, I'm so mad. So I can't just hit them with a hammer? <laughs> then in order to aid Trill, Mag will step up closer to where the swarm has disintegrated. Mag wants to finish off Volok with Haplo's Bastard Sword, which she has been carrying as a totem of a tribute and vengeance since finding it um, in on Boss Skrong's wall. And so she will be using the, I guess maybe the flat part of the blade to nice. squish and smash <laughs> any of the leeches on the ground uh, that it. should get hit by, uh, by Trill's acid splash. Excellent. And as she poises, ready to assist Trill, it is now the beginning of round four. The four of you are in this room looking at this wriggling pile of leeches attempting to escape. Norman, it's your turn. Norman reaches into his bandolier where he keeps his many scrolls and wands, uh, pulls out a, a somewhat dusty wand, <laughs> goes, oh, God. God, uh, 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 slow them down. Uh, make it slippery. And he casts Quench onto the area where uh, Volok's body was. Oh boy, I get to use nature with this, huh? Oh, I have to trick it. Because I don't oh. have... Uh, that's This is fun. This is the first time I've done this. 
So unfortunately, I think that means that you're going to have to wait until next round to do it because tricking it is going to take an action and then you're going to be out of actions this round. Oh, no, I don't care for that. I'll do it now. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess I won't have anything to do next turn even if I do this now. So what does it matter if I do it this turn or next? I could pee on it. Lift a leg. Wait, what are the four actions that are working here? Taking um, out it the would, wand? It would be taking it out, tricking it, and then it's a double move to cast it. Oh, and then it. it's two actions. Mm. I didn't realize I had to, to trick it, but I, I like that this silly wand needs to be tricked. And Could I have used work. my turn to stuff a, a dragon blood pudding into into Norman's mouth to give him an extra action? <laughs> but how would you have known? No way to know. I thought about giving Volok the dragon blood pudding just so he wouldn't have to be slowed. But Aww. That's, oh, so kind. that's so kind of you. <laughs> that's Very so considerate. Norman. I didn't yeah. know which leech to feed it to. <laughs> so, so I'm imagining that Norman is now like looking at this like twisted bit of like gnarled oak in his hand that looks completely unlike any wand he's ever had to use before. Drip, 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 drip. Yeah, and you're like getting ready to <laughs> trick the hell out of this thing or to like make it work for you. Trying, he doesn't quite realize why it's not working. Yeah. So we'll pick up next turn to see if Norman is able to accomplish that. It is now Trill's turn. Trill sees Mag standing <gasps> by, flat of Haplo's blade at the ready, ready to squish. And Trill just keeps on playing away and just her her little fingers are getting starting to get a little worn down to the bone from this frenetic, frantic playing because she's never had to cast so much acid splash coming out of her loot in one go. Sure. She's starting to get a little overwhelmed by it. Strings are but, getting a little flat. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> so constant. And she's seeing all of these guys coming, continue just going along the floor. Ew! Oh my god! I have to... Oh, gross! Let's just kill him on the floor right now! And she's about to start casting. But uh, I believe Mag needs to do a check first. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here's that aid check for some extra smashing, and that's a 34 to aid. So it's a plus two to the attack. And I'm going to say, given that this attack roll doesn't really matter that much, what I'm going to give you for that, like you're going to like theoretically hit no matter what, I'm going to say that Mag's aid is going to make it so a one on the die is not a critical failure. Great. Right. Uh, so let's Lux attack. for insurance. And that's a 22. Okay. So a, a, a acid splashes onto Vadim and Mag and onto these leeches. And now you're going to make a DC 15 flat check. <clears throat> that's only a seven. Do you have a hero point? No. I used the last one. And you have one more action. I have no idea what to do with another action right now. <laughs> Scream in frustration. <laughs> yeah. Like there's, there's, what, what on earth could I do, Lars? I don't, I don't see much. <laughs> We're not peeing on them. We're not going to pee on them. I guess I'll move. I'm just going to move a little closer, I guess then. Okay, that's it. Okay, it's Vadim's turn. Armat, does Vadim have anything relevant here, do you think? I, I mean, uh, I, I kind of don't think so. Vadim just sort of, like, gets out of the way of the others, basically. Okay, Mag, are you going to do the same? Is there anything that my my bark body could do? Could I roll around on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> you could you could aid by rolling around on the sap. ground. Sure. You get sap on the ground. Yeah, talk to me about the effects of sap. Is that area damage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's 20,000 points of area damage. Meg oh. stabs herself with one of those maple tree harvester things so that she <laughs> leaks a little faster. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm going to set up to aid Trill again, and this time I'm also going to I'm going to do so by moving into a flanking position with Vadim so that if this baddie reconstitutes, we'll start out all surrounded and flat-footed and all that kind of fun stuff. Um. Yeah, and and just we'll we'll be getting Haplo's sword out again for some more some more leech batten. It's the top of round five. We're in the middle of this second round of time. If we get past Norman and Trill's initiative counts here, without 
succeeding, Azrene will escape. It's Norman's turn. All right. So Norman is going to try to trick his wand. Okay. And of course, we all have the rules for trick magic item uh, memorized. <laughs> what you've got to do is... Should he put on a costume? I guess they still won't have enough action. <laughs> you have to appear to be a newsboy. You, you attempt to check with a skill matching the item's magic tradition. So that means that Norman is going to do a nature check. Because this is a primal spell. That's a 10. Should I hero point this? I now have a hero point. It kind of seems worth it to keep this dude from escaping. Yeah. All right. Uh... So Norman shakes the thing again. Ah, I got it. I got it. And that time it's a 14. Okay. So this wand of quench level two, you needed to get a 19 on the check to succeed. So the wand fizzles out. Uh. My level two skill feat coming in so handy yet again. <laughs> and Norman, Norman frustratedly spits at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's his area damage. One leech drowns. Yeah. yeah. It's now Trill's turn. Trill what is Trill going to do? Continues to frenetically play Acid Splash. And that's a 19. So the acid splashes again onto the leeches as they attempt to escape out the door. And now we're looking for a DC 13 flat check. Okay. Big roll. 20 on the die! <gasps> and Trill's acid disintegrates all of the remaining leeches. <laughs> Splash them oh, out. Bravo, Trill. And Volik Azrene, the man who was responsible for your friend Haplo's death, the man who built the <laughs> lens that is attacking this, the town of Otari, presumably in very, a very short length of time, the last <laughs> of the leeches carrying his consciousness are evaporated by Trill's Acid splash. Guys, I'm literally crying. Yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> that was incredible. Totally. If I did not get at least a 13, I was going to lose my shit. <laughs> <laughs> what you were saying before. Sorry, I'm just, oh my God. What David was saying before about everything being tied up in those rolls today. I was yeah. feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Bars. <sighs> And as the last of that sizzling fades away, you hear that humming again. Home. Punctuated by a short scream coming from the wall to the east. And we'll pick up from there next time. That bastard. I bet it's good, right? Like a friendly <laughs> scream. It's Borbo it again. Yeah, it's been, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Love him more though. Get it, man. The Roots of Ruin is a tabletop gold production produced under the Paizo Incorporated Community Use Policy. The Roots of Ruin uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Paizo does not recognize, endorse, or sponsor this project in any way. Original characters and content are the property of Tabletop Gold. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. We at Tabletop Gold would love to hear from you. Email us at letters at tabletopgold.com and find all our social links at tabletopgold.com. <laughs>